in just a moment, the youth will be performing a uh, play, which will be based on the scripture I'm about to read for you, which is Luke 16, sorry, Luke 14, 16 through 24. And it says, Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first one said, I have just bought a field and I must go see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I have to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married so I couldn't possibly come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. The owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant to go out quickly into the streets and bring town from the town to the poor, the cripples, the lame, and the blind. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still more room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the road and the country lanes and compel them to come in so that that house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who are invited will get a taste of my banquet. A certain man was preparing a great feast. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servants out to tell those whom he had been invited. Come, for the banquet is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first one said, I have just bought my field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me, sir. The next two said, I have just bought me five oak Jackson and I have to try them out. Please excuse me, partner. Still another said, I have just been married, so I couldn't possibly come. The servant came back and reported this to her master. The master of the house became angry and said, Go out quickly into the roads and the country lanes and bring in the poor, the lame, and the blind. Sir, what you have ordered has been done, but there is still room. Go out to the alleys and the streets and compel them to come in, so my table will be full. I tell you, not one of those who are invited will get a taste of my banquet. Therefore, the kingdom, the kingdom of, of heaven, heaven belongs, belongs to such as these. these. Church. Um, my name is Trey Gilmore. Um, I'm son of Alita Gilmore and Ralph Gilmore. Um, Brad asked me to come up here and talk about missions, and so here I am. So as we saw in the the skit or the drama, um, the um, it shows the master calling out to get the poor and the crippled and the blind, and um, this relates to missions as. We're called to go grab, gather them and bring them. And so um, I want to share my experience with missions. Um, as you know, I went to Honduras. I lived in Honduras for two and a half years with my parents, and I'm very thankful for that, for my parents being called and myself being called there. And I've learned a lot, and I've 
um, matured a lot in <laughs> many ways, and I'm pretty sure all of you can see that. But um, um, so um, there's many ways to um, fulfill missions and to go out and to minister people, and um, I just wanted to depict that through the skit that was shown and to invite people into your house and other ways is telling them about God. And um, there's just so many ways. So thank you. Hold on a sec, you. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Well, my name is Reese Temple. If you can't tell, I'm not really a public speaker. So, actually, on Friday, Brad asked me to come up here and give my testimonial. And I said, sure. But in my head, I was like, oh no. Reese, what are you doing? No. <laughs> so bear with me. Here goes. My mom died when I was five, and my grandparents adopted me, for which I'm very grateful. I'm not saying this so that you'll feel bad. I just want you to understand where I'm coming from, set the stage, so to speak. My grandparents always told me that Mama I called her, was in heaven, and that if I accepted Jesus in my heart, someday I would see her again. I believed them, and I loved Jesus. So at our nightly prayers one night, I was about five or six, I prayed this. Dear Jesus, I love you. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. Amen. I felt pretty good that night and the next morning, but then the next evening rolled around, you see, it struck me that over the course of just one day, I'd done a lot of bad things. I'd sinned. And all of a sudden, I was terrified that God didn't love me anymore, that Jesus was not in my heart. And so I prayed this prayer again. Dear Jesus, I love you. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. Amen. I prayed this prayer every night for over two years. Looking back, I think I felt unworthy of God's love. I thought that I had to keep begging him to come back. At some point along the way, though, I realized that the reverse is actually true. When I accepted Jesus into my heart, that was the start of a wonderful, lifelong commitment. God would never stop loving me and chasing after me. And I'll admit right now that there's been some times where I've drifted in my faith. But every time I turn back, God's waiting for me. He's there for me. I think that's the thing that I've learned over the years. God is always there for you. Even when you fall, you just have to be willing to let him pick you back up. Well, that's the end of my testimony, and I hope that you liked it. Thank you. Just wonderful to see this next generation up here ministering in the name of Jesus Christ, isn't it? God is doing so much in our youth ministry, and we're so thankful as a church. Uh, being Youth Sunday, uh, Brad Older, um, our youth leader, the leader of our youth ministry team, is going to come and preach. Uh, Brad is in the process of walking toward uh, serving God with his life as a vocation. Uh, he has sensed a call of God to full-time ministry, and uh, he, along with Elizabeth Rohr, are in preparation for that, and they just went through a preaching class, and uh, they got to preach each to each other in the class, and uh, Brad boldly volunteered to preach today. And so this will be uh, his first preaching in this kind of setting. And uh, I, I promised that mostly he's among friends. You know, we don't know about some, <laughs> but mostly. Uh, no, but we'd, we're just so thankful for what God is doing um, 
in our youth ministry and our youth workers and uh, in Brad. So would you welcome him with the love of Jesus Christ as he comes to share God's word with us today. Is that better, Phil? All right. <laughs> All right. Let's start over there. All right. Good morning. <laughs> if you weren't awake, you are now. So, uh, so sharing with you today, um, I want to talk a little bit about um, what our goal is as Christians. Um, and so when thinking about that, I want you to think about winning the ultimate prize. Um, and for parents in here, uh, or those of you with younger siblings, um, man, think of winning games. I know with my kids going to the fair, um, always a fun time playing carnival games. Uh, winning the prize though, are the kids ever happy with that tiny little toy, or do they want to keep going, and they want to get that giant teddy bear that's hanging in the corner? Uh, I know my kids. My kids want that giant teddy bear. Uh, and we can posture ourselves like that, too, um, with our goal being in relationship with Christ. Uh, he's that giant teddy bear. Let's not settle for that little tiny one. So... Um, diving in a little bit into the Word, um, we're going to be going over a little bit uh, in the third book of Philippians, um, specifically verses 12 through 14, um, as well as sharing a little bit more. So um, we'll go ahead and read those to you right now. Um, Philippians 3, 12, not that I have obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of for, of which for Christ Jesus took a hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken a hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So looking into this a little bit more, um, and we see in verse 12, Paul is showing his vulnerability in that he has not yet reached glorification. Uh, and for those of us uh, that haven't went through ministry classes, uh, glorification being the final step in the application of our process of redemption, um, which follows a sanctification, uh, the continual process of being made holy. So glorification is kind of that end result. Um, so he's saying that he hasn't arrived yet in heaven with the Father either, but that he is working towards it as Jesus has instructed him. We see in verse 13, Paul is calling all brothers and sisters in Christ to leave their old lives behind them and to work towards that glorification. Verse 14, we see Paul saying that he will do everything he can in his will to reach what he was called to do. So what do we know of Paul? We know that Paul was on the road to Damascus to persecute Christians when Jesus spoke to him and he ultimately gave his life up to help serve Christ um, and went from persecuting Christians to help pushing Christians forward. Paul was a pioneer. Paul um, believed that salvation was based upon faith, which is our relationship with, with Jesus, rather than just works of the law, meaning we can read the Bible, we can look at the laws that are stated in it, but are we having a relationship based with him? This belief that he had would later continue to influence many other people. Um, you know, when we look into our free Methodist history, being a free Methodist church, um, Martin Luther was a, a very well-known man too, who believed the same thought um, with, with the Catholic church. He believed that it wasn't all about works, that it was about the faith and relationship with Jesus Christ. Looking more into Paul, uh, when we're looking at the New Testament, there's 27 books in the New Testament. Paul helped attribute to 13 of those books. That's quite a feat. Um, Paul was also the man who introduced the doctrine of the Trinity, uh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
So when we look at what Paul is telling us here in these three verses, um, you know, I think about my own personal life a little bit. So um, to share a little bit with you, um, when I first come to know Christ, I was broken, as many of us were. I had a past history of drug abuse, anger, jealousy, um, just all not good things. But through prayer, he showed me how to realize my anger and how to instead have joy in knowing that he is in control of every situation, if we let him be. And if we do, we let his light shine through us and that joy comes to the front. We see um, that very clearly spoken to us in Isaiah 55, verse 12. And that says, You will live in joy and peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. That joy is coming to the front. Through prayer, he also showed me, that is Galatians 5.19 states, Jealousy and outbursts of anger are of the flesh. Right? It's not of him. That's of ourselves. Right? And if we were going to live for Christ, as I was going to, it meant that we were to die to our own flesh. And we see in Galatians 6, 4 through 5, pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. We don't have to compare. We don't have to have that jealousy. Our identity is in Christ, and Christ is the maker of all things. So we have the perfect identity already. Again, through prayer, he showed me that, as Paul stated in, in verse 13, that we're to leave our previous life behind us and to move forward. But we can use our past experiences in that past life to help others go forth in his name. We see in 1 Peter 4, 6, that is why the good news was preached to those who are now dead. So, although they were destined to die like all people, they now live forever with God in the Spirit. No longer was I broken. Not perfect, but working towards that ultimate goal, that ultimate prize of getting to be with Jesus. So a little bit more uh, going into the history of things. Um, man, before being called into ministry, um, a lot of you probably would have saw me sitting in the back row, just being quiet, being that shy kid to myself. I never wanted to speak in front of people. Uh, I never wanted to even go out of my way to say hello to people. I was quite content just being quiet, and that was okay to me. But when we're called by God to do things, we have to accept that. We have to say, yes, Lord, and do as he instructs. And when we do, and through prayer, again, he showed me that he does not qualify, or he, <laughs> he does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. We just need to answer, yes, Lord, and let him lead us. We see in 1 Peter 5.10, in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. He's going to support us. He's going to lift us up. He's going to give us the strength to do the things that we thought that we couldn't do. He is our firm foundation. So what was the common theme that we saw throughout uh, my sharing here? It was prayer, right? We need to pray. We need to give everything over to him. Prayer is our relationship with God. Prayer is our relationship with Christ. So how have we as believers endured um, what Paul did? Well, have we ever knew someone that was struggling somebody struggling with addiction or another form of slavery that was radically changed by the Lord? I can think of a few people. Have we ever thought that our past inhibits our growth with the Lord? Man, I struggled with that for a long time. But we can't let our past control us. 
Do we ever feel as though we are continually working towards his glory? So it's not our glory. It's his glory. Have we done everything we can do or give up everything we need to in order to be in his presence? I know I get selfish at times. And I want to keep things. Or I don't want to do things. But again, we have to answer, yes, Lord. So, we have to forget our past lives. Our lives are renewed with Jesus. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. The fun part about this is once we accept Christ into our lives and we choose to follow him, he makes us new. We get to start over. We have a clean slate. We must give up of ourselves continually to carry the cross. It, it's not just here or there, continually being the key word there. We can't just pick and choose when we want to follow him. We have to do it all the time. First Chronicles 16.11 says, Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Don't just seek it when you want to. Seek it always. We must look towards Christ in all things. Again, another key word, all 1 Corinthians 8, 6 says, Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and through whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whose we live. That key word, all, is in there a few times. All things come from him. All things are his. So, have we prayed? Pastor David, uh, if you are a regular attender um, or have been in the past, may have seen that we've gone through a few series of how to pray or about prayer. We did uh, a sermon series called Lord Teach Us to Pray. Did a, a series about the, the Lord's Prayer. And we also did a series called Yes, Lord. And if you can't tell, that one impacted me a little bit there. But are we doing it? Are we committing to a relationship, again, being prayer, with him? Are we giving everything over to him? When's the last time you prayed? It can be a hard question sometimes. But as we've heard before, we need to pray continually. Pray for all things and through all things. Give everything over to him. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 shows us never stop praying. Never. In every situation, we can pray. We see in 1 Corinthians 14.15, Well then, what shall I do? I will pray in the Spirit, and I will also pray in words I understand. We pray in the Spirit. And the Spirit is here with us. James 5, 6 says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. We have accountability. Okay? We can share our thoughts. We can share our prayers with other people and there's strength in numbers. And when we share and we pray together, there's power in that. So that we may be healed. He is our healer. So if we give it over to him, he will heal us. Wonderful results. I love wonderful results. Everybody does. And that wonderful result is winning that giant teddy bear at the carnival. Or spending eternity with Jesus. We also see in Jeremiah 29, 12, in those days when you pray, I will listen. That is huge. We're being told that he hears our prayers. We may not always get the answer that we want when we pray, but we have to realize that it's not about what we want. It's about what God wants for us. He hears our prayers and he will take care of us. So, moving forward, 
how can we relate to Paul's devotion in today's world? Well, considering that Paul attributed to 13 books in the New Testament, we get a little silly here. What would Paul put on his Facebook page? What would Paul share with the rest of the world? Right? Would he be pleased with what we're posting on Facebook? We see here on the slide, you know, go into the club, share with all your friends except for the pastor. Sorry, Pastor David. Uh, is that how we want to live our lives? Is that how we should live our lives as Christians? You know, no. Well, everything that we should be doing should be pleasing to him. So is going to the club and not sharing that with your pastor because you're ashamed of it might not be the right thing to do. So when we're thinking of verse 14 in Philippians 3, winning the goal of the ultimate prize, what is the goal of any game? It's to win. And when we think of playing games, or especially sports and athletes, how often do professional athletes practice? Do they just practice here and there, once in a great while? No, they're committed. They practice all the time. They are ready for every game that they have. That should be our life and our walk with Jesus. We should be practicing with him all the time, every chance we get. So, when coach says practice is going to be easy, Sit on a throne of lies. <laughs> is it always easy? No. It's not easy. We're going to face trials. We're going to face tribulations. But it's God that sustains us. And as long as we continue to give everything to him, he'll take care of us. He'll provide for us. So, when things get tough, do we give up? Or do we keep going? I say we keep going. So, what did Paul say or do? Well, Paul said, Philippians 3.17, to join together in his examples. Right? Paul was setting forth a, a series of examples for us. Paul changed his whole entire life on the road to Damascus. Right? Paul was being persecuted, or was persecuting Christians, and flipped that around. He was no longer persecuting Christians. He was lifting them up. He was building, helping build the kingdom. He said, keep your eyes on those who live as we do, not on enemies of the cross who are destructive. God is their stomach and glory is their shame. Where should our focus and attention be? Right. He said that our citizenship is not in heaven, or is in heaven. Ooh, it is in heaven. It is not on this earth of earth, earthly things. Right? It's already been commanded. Our citizenship is in heaven if we accept him, right? And the things on this earth and the earthly things that we have are of no importance in heaven. He also said that the Lord will transform us under his control to be glorified like him in Philippians 3, 20 through 21. He will transform us. We have to allow him to transform our lives. He transformed me from being the shy, quiet kid in the back of the sanctuary never saying hello to being up here on the stage talking to you all right now. Right? We need to forget our past and realize that Jesus has created us new. We need to constantly continue to strive towards that ultimate prize. And not only do we need to continue to strive towards that, we need to multiply others into seeking the ultimate prize. We see in 1 Peter 4, 9 through 11, that offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. We saw earlier on the platform as the youth came and shared that they were using their gifts and their talents. Uh, we had students that uh, were in the play, in the drama. Students performing on musical instruments. God gave us talents. And we can use those talents to help multiply his kingdom. We need to be living examples of Jesus Christ. Everywhere we go, everything that we do, everyone is watching. We need to pray. 
Not only do we need to pray, but we need to listen to him when we pray. And when he speaks to us, we need to let him take control. We need to allow him to transform us. And we need to answer him with the simple answer of yes, Lord. So, as you go out this week, I want you to ask yourselves, am I working towards the ultimate prize? Are we working to spending an eternity with Christ Jesus? Or are we working for earthly things here? I don't know about you. I want to work towards those ultimate prizes of living with Jesus in eternity. And I hope you all do as well. Thank you. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you so much that you, you have placed this call upon us that we see in your word out of Philippians 3 here as our brother Brad has shared. You place this call upon us to push toward this prize, to press on toward your presence, glorification in your glory, being made whole in perfection the day we see you face to face. We thank you, Lord, that, Lord, you haven't set our destiny before us as eternal separation from you. You set our destiny before us as unification with you. We thank you for that, Lord. So we give you permission to continue to speak to us as we've heard from your word to lay down those things that have gotten in the way, that distract us from that ultimate prize, that ultimate goal. Lord, call us to deeper places of prayers. We heard about from your word this morning that we could connect with you here with the eyes of our heart on there, where we're heading. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, I'm humbled this morning thinking that you don't, you don't have the little worthless prize for me. Lord, you don't have the little worthless throwaway prize for any of us. Lord, you call us to the great. You call us to the wonderful prize. You call us to that which is unfathomable, the glory of your presence. May we live today in light of that day. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me? Aren't you thankful for our youth ministry? Aren't you thankful for the students? I talked to Brad about if they're available and able that they could greet us in the back, slap us some high fives and things like that on the way out. So students, if you're able, could you make your way back and greet people as we go out today? And they can thank you for a wonderful service. And let me just bless you with the word of the Lord that we heard this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. May you press on toward the upward goal, the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus our Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you lay hold of that for which you were laid hold of by Christ Jesus, to the glory of his holy name. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, next week, 10 o'clock, come prepared for a great celebration.